So uh, welcome again. In this lecture, we'll discuss the common source amplifier, the simple one and with source degeneration. So in this lecture, we will start by understanding a simple common source amplifier and its input and output characteristics. Also, we'll see how to uh, derive the gain from this input output characteristics. Then you'll see how to draw this small signal model, including the channel length modulation and derive the gain from this small signal model. Then we'll discuss common source amplifier with source degeneration. We'll draw the small signal circuit of this amplifier, as well as we'll try to find out the gain, including the channel length modulation and body effect. Then we'll try to estimate the output impedance of the common source amplifier with source degeneration. This concept is the basis for the cascode amplifier and very high gain folded cascode op-amps. Lastly, we will simulate all the circuits that we have discussed in LTSPICE for better understanding of the concepts. So we have many things to discuss today. So let's get started. Okay, this is my uh, common source amplifier. So we can see here the source is connected to the ground. The input is applied at the gate and the output will be from the drain. So let's label them. So I have this DC signal V in. Again, the, this is represented by cap capital letter V and also the subscript is in capital letter. The small signal or the small signal voltage is represented by small v and also the subscript is by small letter and the combination of these two is written as the capital letter and of course the subscript is small letter so it's a combination of ac and dc and of course i have the resistor rd let's name this uh, mosfet as m1 and the output is taken from the drain out okay so this is my uh, common source amplifier this is called common because the source is connected to the ground and it is common to the input and to the output so if you see here the source uh, is connected to the ground and I am seeing the input which is applied to the gate with respect to the ground and the output is also with respect to the ground so now before we analyze or before we see the gain of this amplifier let's try to see uh, what happens if I slowly vary this uh, V in uh, considering that this the there is no uh, small signal I'm just varying the DC the input DC from 0 to VDD and we'll see how does the V out varies So I'll be drawing the V in versus V out graph. So slowly my uh, input voltage, I'm increasing this input voltage. So initially when it is very close to zero or less than threshold voltage, we can see that the M1 will be in cutoff region. So no current will be flowing through this. So basically this current represented by ID will be zero. Okay, so this node voltage will be close to VDD. So it will look something like this. So um, my output is VDD. And this is the point when my V in is still VTH. As soon as this is higher than the threshold voltage, this register M1 will slowly start going into the saturation region okay this is the saturation region and this will be in the saturation region till the point v in 1 so what is this v in 1 so v in 1 is the point where my input voltage has increased increased and because of which this id will increase 
So as the ID start increasing, the voltage drop across this RD uh, becomes higher and this V out starts falling down. So we can see here, right? So I'm increasing this V in and the V out is falling down. So the point where this V in is greater than V out by VTH or this is the point where my V in minus V out or V in 1 minus V out is equal to VTH means it has just reached a threshold voltage. If I increase this V in further this V out will come down and the V in will be higher than V out by more than VTH. So after this point the transistor will go into the linear region. So after this point the transistor goes into the linear region and this is I should say that this is the point where the M1 is saturation region and this is the region where the uh, transistor or this configuration acts as an amplifier. You can see that this can be approximated by a straight line and it can be used as an amplifier. Okay, now see if I bias my transistor maybe at this point, let's call it as V in, the voltage that I have biased in and of course there will be corresponding V out. So at this point I can see that I can use this uh, you know configuration or this as an amplifier. So this is the common source amplifier. So by finding the slope we can find out the gain of this amplifier. So let's find out the slope of this line. So we know that the slope of this line uh, can be uh, found out by differentiating. So I need to express V out in terms of V in. So if I write V out in terms of V in, it is something like this. So if you see the V out can be written as VDD minus ID RD. This is a small d because uh, this ID is a combination of DC as well as the AC signal. Then, and of course in this region we can replace this ID by the equation of the MOSFET in saturation region. Of course here we will ignore that RO for time being for simplicity. In the next analysis we will include this RO. So this RID is half mu and C ox W by L V in minus VTH whole square rd. We will include the effect of channel length modulation or RO in the later stage of the analysis. Now we are dropping it to make the analysis simple. So now uh, if you see here I have expressed V out in terms of V in for this reason and to find out the slope I can just do the simple differentiation. So the gain my gain AV is represented by this AV so which is basically the differentiation of V out by V in okay so the V in is the x-axis and V out is the y-axis so if I differentiate this term with respect to V in you see this VDD is constant so this will be 0 so and if I differentiate this term right so of course this 2 will come in the front okay so what I will get here is something like this so 2 and 2 will get cancelled Okay, so what I'll have is minus mu n c ox w by l v in minus v t h into r d. So of course note that we are trying to find the slope at this point where my v in is equal to VIN or this DC voltage okay that that means I need to replace this V in with this VIN okay so now if you remember this term is nothing but the transconductance or the ZM you can revise the previous lecture so this is nothing but the ZM of the transistor which we have discussed in the previous discussion or previous lecture so I can write this whole term as minus Zm 
Rd. So minus Gm Rd is the gain of this uh, common source amplifier or the CS amplifier in this region. And of course, I have to make sure that the uh, transistor doesn't go in the linear region or in a cutoff region. So this defines the boundary of this input signal as well as the output signal. So the output, the maximum output can go to VDD and you know, so a uh, minimum it can go till this, this voltage, okay. Similarly, the, you know, V in also cannot be uh, lower than VTH and it should not be higher than this V in 1 voltage, okay. Now let's try to derive the gain and let's try to get the same expression using the small signal analysis. So let's draw the uh, small signal model of this common source amplifier. Okay, this is the small signal model of the, you know, this amplifier. The source is grounded. So this is my V in. And this is my ZM VZS. Okay, this is the transconductance. And, um, and of course, this is my load resistance RD. And this is my V out. And of course, I can write this current I out this side okay so of course here also I am neglecting RO in the next analysis we will include RO and see how the gain varies with RO so now what I can write is I out can be written as this ZM PZS and now if you see this I out I out is flowing from ground to V out okay so it is in this direction. So that means it's going from zero potential to this V out. That means this node voltage has to be negative. Or the other way to find out by simple KVL is zero minus V out by this resistance RD will give me my I out, okay? So that means I out is minus V out by RD. So it implies minus V out by RD is equal to ZM VZS, okay? Of course, VZS here in this case is equal to V in. So I can replace this VZS by V in. So if I rearrange, right? So this V out by V in will be equal to minus ZM RD. Okay? So using the small signal analysis also, I can prove that the gain of this common source amplifier is minus ZM RD. So now let's see what happens if we include the channel length modulation or the RO in the small signal model and see how does the gain varies with it. So RO is now included because this node is grounded in this case I should say it's a special case the RO and RD will come parallel so it may not happen always but in this case this RO and RD comes parallel so I can easily write that the gain can be written as minus ZM RO parallel RD decrease in RO you can see that the gain decreases so RO has a good dependence on the gain and if these two are comparable maybe if RD is equal to RO the gain will be half compared to the case when we have assumed that the RO is infinite so compared to this case where RO is infinite right RO is not present so if RO and RD are comparable 
then the gain becomes half. So RO has a significant effect on the gain of the amplifier. So one may ask what is the output impedance of this amplifier to get the output impedance or basically the Z O. So to find out the Z out we need to make this V in 0. Okay? So this is the way to find out the Z out. So if this is grounded that means this is grounded so there is no existence of this voltage dependent current source and we can see here the impedance looking here is nothing but this RO parallel RD. So both of these are grounded and this is the node where I am evaluating the Z out. So the Z out of this amplifier is RO parallel RD. So Z out is equal to RO parallel RD. So now we will see a common source amplifier with a resistance at the source. This is called common source amplifier with source degeneration. So a resistance RS is added. Okay. So let's try to find out what is the gain now doing this small signal analysis. Again, initially we will neglect RO and later on we will add RO and see the effect of RO and again just like the previous discussion. At the same time note that in the previous case and there was no body bias effect because the source was connected to the ground and assuming the bulk is also connected to the lowest potential which is the ground so there was no difference but in this case you can see here that the source will be a higher potential compared to the ground because a current will be flowing through this RS, right? The same current ID will be flowing and there will be a potential difference. So this node will be at a higher potential higher to the ground. Whereas the bulk terminal node shown here is connected to the ground. So there will be a BBS voltage. And at the same time, the signal will be riding here as a result of which we should consider the body bias effect in the small signal analysis. So this is the small signal without the RS. So let's add RS here. So my RS is added here. Okay. In first simplified analysis, we will not consider RO and the body effect. And in the next analysis, we will consider RO as well as the body effect. So this is the current I out again this flowing through this one okay and the same I out is going to flow through this RS. Now again I can write the similar analysis equation again here. So I out can be written as of course the same here ZM VZS. If you see this VZS in this case is the VZS in this case let's not name this not as maybe Vs okay so the Vgs is V in minus Vs and Vs we can write as you know as Vs is basically I out into this resistant Rs so implies I out can be written as so if I just rearrange it, it is something like this okay and uh, just like in the previous derivation I out is minus V out by RD so you can replace this one So finally, the conclusion that I'll have is therefore AV Okay, so this is the gain of the amplifier with a resistance RS at the source. 
okay so now imagine this term is much much larger than 1 so if this ZMRS is much much larger than 1 then my gain AV is given by so uh, this is 1 so what I have is minus ZMRD so and this is greater than 1 so uh, much much greater than 1 so I can approximate it as this term itself only so this ZM ZMs get cancelled so finally what I'll have is RD by RS so this is an important uh, conclusion right so when we have a resistor at the source right the gain becomes smaller basically so we can see here initially the gain was minus gmrd now an additional factor has come which is 1 plus gmrs and because of which the gain reduces okay and of course again we have seen that if the gmrs is much much larger than 1 then the gain is just the ratio of the rd and rs this uh, configuration is widely used uh, especially when we want to make the gain independent of the transconductant GM right so if I want to make the gain independent of GM and if I want the gain to be just the ratio of the two resistor so this kind of configuration is used you see we are telling that uh, with this approximation when the GM RS is very high the gain is Rd by Rs which is basically the ratio of two resistance and it is independent of Gm. So people try to develop this kind of circuit. I like to put a question to all of you that uh, just think why we want to make some circuit which is independent of Gm and uh, where the gain is only the ratio of two resistor and GM is not involved in the gain of the circuit. Okay, now let's include the RO and you know the body effect and let's see the expression of the gain. Okay, so we have included this body effect which is ZMB VBS and <coughs> the RO, right? So this is the complete model of the MOSFET with the channel length modulation as well as the body effect. Common source amplifier with source degeneration with RO and the body effect which is ZMB. The step for the derivations are quite similar but I suggest that you should try to do yourself because this is a practice to solve more complex circuit in the later stages. So if you see I out now, the I out has basically now three components ZM, VGS, RO, the current flowing through RO as well as the current is ZMB, PVS. So I can write I out as ZM VGS this component and the current flowing through RO the current flowing through RO if you see the potential difference between this and this is V out and VS so it is basically V out minus VS by this RO so this is the current flowing through this the current flowing through this one is ZMB into VBS. So now let's substitute this VZS as VN minus VS. So I have ZM VN minus VS plus this V out V out minus VS by RO. I'm keeping it as it is. I'm not substituting anything. And this is 0 minus VS because VV is connected to the ground so it is 0 minus Vs. Now I can substitute this Vs with 
i out into r as as we have done in the previous derivation so implies my i out is equal to gm v in minus this is i out into rs this one is and then ro it will be minus gmb i out into rs okay so now what i can do is i can multiply this r out everywhere okay so what i'll get is i out into ro so i'm multiplying this ro everywhere this side both left hand side and right hand side okay so now if i substitute so if you see here now we have done this i out i out i out i out and v out here okay so i can convert this i out as minus v out by rb as we have done in the last derivation substituting and if we make all the rearrangement please try to do yourself and definitely will get the ratio of v out by v in because if i replace all this i out with uh, you know with minus v out by rd i'll have only these two terms remaining v in either the terms with v in or v out so if i take the ratio what i'll get here is the gain which is v out by v in will be given by minus gmrd into ro ro plus rs plus rd plus gm plus gmb so this is the gain expression uh, of the common source amplifier with source degeneration considering ro and gmb so again here also if you see if this term is much much larger than these terms it, it will be larger because here we are having multiplication of two resistance so if, again if this is much much larger than this term again the gain will be simplified to minus rd by rs so you can see here right so considering that gm plus gmb is quite same or the gmb is much smaller than gm so all these terms will get cancelled and what i'll have here is minus rd by rs of course this is a big formula you don't have to remember but this is a good exercise you know to solve and find out the gain expression of a given circuit so now we like to see the output impedance of this common source amplifier with source degeneration so basically we want to see this output impedance the output impedance of the common source amplifier with source degeneration is very high and this concept is important because this is a fundamental principle which is exploited and used to design high gain cascode amplifiers or very high gain op amps to find out this output impedance this z out or whatever is the impedance looking inside this node v out let's try to split this impedance into two parts okay so i have the two impedance here one impedance is looking upward which is basically the rd the impedance looking upward is definitely the rd and let the impedance looking downward let it be rx and of course the combined together is the z out and of course z out is parallel of rx parallel rd okay so our main target is to find out this rx rd is very simple rx and this rx is very high basically and as i was mentioning this is the foundation of the uh, cascode amplifiers with high gain so this principle is used to design the uh, cascode amplifiers with high gain 
so to do that let's draw the small signal again of this portion and of course when we are trying to calculate the output impedance as we have said before we need to make the v in zero so let's start drawing this small signal circuit so this is the uh, small signal model of this mosfet including the channel length modulation ro as well as the uh, body bias effect and of course we have the resistance rs at the bottom okay so now as i was mentioning the v in is zero or there is no input signal so small signal wise this is grounded and the impedance looking here is basically the rx and to find out the impedance the way to do is we need to apply a small signal here and find out the current for that small signal voltage so i am applying a small signal voltage vx and because of which there will be a current ix and the rx this impedance is nothing but the ratio of this vx by ix and with this v in grounded so if i find out this vx by ix then I will get the Rx, the output impedance of this whole circuit. Again, let's name this voltage as Vs. Okay. And again, let's write down the uh, this current Ix. So this current Ix is combination of this ZmVzs and the current flowing through this RO. And of course, the ZmB, Vs. Sorry, this will be Vs. My Ix is given by this one which is zmvzs this the current flowing through this one as we have discussed before is nothing but the potential difference between these two divided by this ro vx minus vs by ro plus the current flowing through this which is zmb pvs okay so now let's replace this vzs with this voltage vs so if you see here the this is grounded and the, uh, you can see here the vzs is the gate is at ground so basically it's just the minus vs so what i can write here is ix is equal to zm the z is ground so zero minus vs only this is the notice vs this voltage is vs and of course i have my plus vx minus vx minus vs by ro and vvs is again zero minus vs okay because this node voltage is at vs and vv is at ground okay so this is my ix so what i can do now is i can multiply ro in both the sides so what I'll get is, so I'll get Ix into Ro as Now, as we did before, we can replace this Vs as Ix into Rs because the same current Ix is flowing through this Rs. So this my Vs is Ix into Rs. So replacing Vs by Ix into Rs, we will get Ix into Ros. We need to replace all this Vs with Ix into Rs. Okay, so I can bring all the Ix terms in one side and only the Vx term will be remaining this side. So therefore, my Rx, which is Vx by Ix, can be written as just by taking this Ix this side. What I'll get here, what I'll get is Ro plus Rs plus Zm plus Zmb. I can take here Ro and Rs common. So this is the output impedance 
looking into this node okay so if i look into this node uh, that expression is the output impedance so if you observe this expression if you see here this has a multiplication factor of two resistance as well as gm so this factor this whole term so this whole term can be large okay this whole term can be very very huge and the whole expression can be approximated as just by this term or you can say it's just gm plus gmb because this term is going to be much much larger than this ro and rs so you can see here the rx is really a very high impedance because it's a multiplication factor of two resistance so this technique is basically used to implement very high impedance in a vlsi circuit especially when we'll be seeing how uh, to get the high impedance in the current meters as well as in the amplification when we'll be discussing the cascode amplifier this technique will be used right so this technique where the impedance uh, looking into this kind of transistor through this uh, source degeneration or this is the fundamental principle of getting very high impedance okay so now whatever we have discussed whatever the theory that we have discussed we will see the same things in the lt spice this will help to make our understanding much better also i assume that you have gone through the previous video of the basic introduction of the lt spice so that we can go little fast now okay so this is my common source amplifier um, let's plug in the parameters so first the supply voltage we'll use 1.8 1.8 volt because we'll be using model file for 180 nanometer and for this technology the maximum supply voltage is 1.8 volt resistance let's consider maybe 5 kilo ohms 5k um, of course input let's keep a dc voltage of 1 volt but in the first analysis the first analysis that we'll do is we'll try to find out the input versus output the transfer characteristics the one which we have analyzed so we want to plot by slowly varying this v in how my v out will vary so let's level this net this will be v out this will be v in okay so um, let's set this parameter of this MOSFET let's use 0 0.2 micron and with maybe or 20 micron so this is the model file for the NMOS and the PMOS for 180 nanometer technology I'll be pasting this text in the description below so that you can directly copy it and use for your simulation file as well as in the link of the website i will be posting the uh, spice file itself so that you can try this simulation yourself so let's copy the model file for this nmos and select the spice directive paste it here so we are almost ready to run the simulation in the simulation we are going to sweep this voltage from 0 to VDD so go to spice directive and again right click and help me edit so we are going to do this DC sweep analysis so this DC sweep analysis is basically like the DC operating point analysis only thing is that I will be varying one voltage in this case all voltage was constant but here I am will be sweeping so let's because i'll be sweeping this voltage v2 right the start value will be 0 to vdd which is 1.8 volt and of course the sweep will be in linear with a step size of maybe 0 0.01 volt 
So we can go a step size smaller than this, but it will take longer time for simulation. If we take a step size larger than this, then the curve that we will get will not be very smooth. So you can try around by increasing or decreasing this uh, step size. So place it here in the schematic. Now, so our now design is ready for simulation. You can save it. So run the simulation. You can uh, place the mouse pointer and plot the V out. So here the X axis is the V in because this is the parameter that I'm sweeping from 0 to 1.8 volt and Y axis is the V out. So this is the same curve that we have got, the one which we have discussed in the theory, we have got this similar curve. So this is the point where the, you know, MOSFET is in the cutoff region. So if you can see here, the threshold voltage of this MOSFET is 0 0.5 volt. So till 0 0.5 volt, the MOSFET was in cutoff state. And as the VGS becomes more than 0 0.5 volt, the transistor starts conducting and it goes into the saturation region. And of course, when the VGS is too high, higher than this VDS, then it goes into the linear region here. Okay. Let's try to find out the gain. The gain will be the slope of this curve. So to find out the gain, you can just click here and get your cursors. So this is cursor number one and get one more cursor cursor number two so you can see here this window will display the slope of this um, uh, slope of this line okay so the gain is 15 okay so the gain of this amplifier is 15 you can play around by changing the WYL as well as this resistance and see that the slope of this um, line will change okay now suppose if I want to use this configuration as a common source amplifier, I should be biasing my amplifier or the V-in should be biased at this point. So to know where I should bias, we can move this cursor and see that I should bias at this point. So the corresponding point in the x-axis is, it is basically this one corresponding to this cursor one, it is 612. So if I bias at 612, I will get a gain of 15 and my input voltage should not go beyond this maybe you know if you can see that that cursor 1 minus cursor 2 in the x-axis is 36 millivolt and if you go in the downside it is also around 40 so um, I should say that it's around 40 only if it cannot go beyond that if it goes beyond that the output will get clip okay so so let's bias our transistor at uh, 612 and do the transients simulation and see that we are getting a gain of similar gain of around 15 right okay to do the transient simulation you can delete this one and of course we need to change this one so you can go to this as discussed in the last lecture we have to select this one to generate the sine wave and DC as we know it should be around 612 millivolt as we have seen from the DC, DC transfer characteristics and uh, the amplitude should not be more than you know 36 or 35 millivolt so let's consider a small signal of 30 millivolt frequency let's consider 10 kilohertz okay so let's do the transient simulation go here Trend and simulation, let us simulate for a time till one millisecond. Now you can plot this voltage. So you can see that uh, this is the output voltage. Okay. And uh, we can find out the peak to peak voltage. Uh, again, you can bring the cursor back. So cursor number one is here. Cursor number two is here, okay. So you can see here the difference, right? The difference in the uh, vertical is 916, right? 916 millivolt, right? And the peak to peak amplitude that you have applied here, the amplitude is 30 millivolt. So the peak to peak voltage the, for the input is 60 
millivolt. So we can do a division to find out the gain. So 916 millivolt divided by 60 is around 15.26. So this is what we have seen uh, from the slope as well. It's close to around 15. So we can see that uh, there is a uh, match between the result of the slope calculation from the DC transfer characteristics as well as from the transient simulation. Okay, now next let's modify this one and introduce a resistance here and see what is the DC transfer characteristics for a common source amplifier with source degeneration. Okay, my resistor is connected here. So let's give some value maybe around 100 ohms. We'll start with 100 ohms and slowly increase. And let's change this value to 2 kilo ohms. Okay. And maybe let's change this to, okay, let's keep it same as the previous one. Okay. And let's do the DC sweep now. Again, we need to change this one to simple one. DC value, you can give 1 volt. Okay. Note that you need to give a DC value, otherwise sometimes it will show an error. So, but of course we are sweeping this voltage, so this value has no meaning, but you should just put some value here. Again, let me edit. This is sweep, again from source V2. Sweep linear 0 to VDD, which is 1.8 volt and increment of 0 0.01. Okay, save it. Okay, so now you can plot the V out. So you can see here, right? You can see here. Um, so maybe let's try to find out the slope and the gain. Okay, so you need to first click here, then one cursor will come. Again, you need to do a second click to get the second cursor. So you can see that the slope is uh, 5.7, okay? And we know that as we increase this value, the gain is going to decrease. So let's change to one key. Yeah, so the gain is around 1.2. So uh, when we had done the approximation in the theory, we have seen that the gain should be Two by one but it is far away from this approximation the reason is because the gm of this transistor is small that's why gm into r is also small so the approximation is not valid to make the approximation correct we need to increase the gm of this transistor we can increase the gm of this transistor by uh, increasing its wyl ratio so currently it is 20 let's make it 40 so now what I expect is this should go towards 2, right? The maximum will be 2. Of course, it cannot be more than 2, but it will go towards 2. So again, run the simulation. So yeah, readjust the slope again. So you can see here now it has become from 1.2 to 1.4. If I further increase this W by L instead of 40, let's make it maybe 100. And let's run it again, save and run. So you can see here now the slope uh, from you can see here uh, from 1.4 it has gone to almost 1.5. So I mean the approximation is going closer. Okay, yeah, of course, but it's just an approximation. The idea here is that as we increase this resistance, the gain is going to decrease. Okay, so now let's try to find out the out output impedance looking in this node. Okay, uh, to do that, we will do an SE analysis. So you can just delete this one and delete this resistance. So, <clears throat> but we need to bias this at some potential. Okay, so um, to do that, let's try to find out what is the voltage here. Again, uh, let's go back to maybe 40 micron. 
we should know what's the voltage that we should bias around so of course um, so let's try to do the operating point analysis and find out this DC voltage so the DC voltage is around 1.1 volt okay so okay let's delete this resistance so yeah now I need to bias this point at you know 1.1 volt we don't want to keep this resistance as we have done in the theoretical analysis we want to just find out the impedance of only this portion not with the uh, resistance so I have biased it at 1.1 volt right we need to bias it otherwise this transistor will go into the uh, linear region and of course we can select any other voltage only we have to make sure that uh, compared to this V in or whatever this voltage uh, this should not be lower than uh, this one by a threshold voltage otherwise it will go into the linear region if it is equal to this one or higher than this volt voltage if the V out is equal to this one or higher than this voltage it will be in the uh, saturation region now I need to apply a sine wave here and you know plot the V out by this current okay so to do that we will do the SC analysis because this is a small signal impedance that I am going to calculate so for that we need to do the SC analysis so to do that we need to change this source to a uh, you know uh, sign generator okay and the offset as we know that it should be 1.1 volt the DC value okay and SC amplitude you can consider maybe 100 milli and SC phase you can keep it as 0 okay so now yeah so I have a DC source here which is basically the offset voltage and on, on top of that uh, a small signal of 100 millivolt is riding over it so I want to find out the impedance okay now so we will do the SC analysis SC analysis is basically the small signal analysis and it helps us to find out the small signal impedance so SC analysis um, start frequency can be one and stop frequency can be any frequency because we don't because this is not a frequency dependent parameter that we are trying to see of course in the later lecture we'll see how the impedance also vary with the frequency but we just want to see the impedance at a low frequency okay so maybe just give uh, one gigahertz okay so now we are ready to run the simulation so run the simulation okay so now we will plot the AC signal V out by this current I ID okay so right click here add traces V out by the current flowing through this is basically the IDM1 the current flowing through this IDM1 or you can make it as IV1 is also fine so, yeah so of course now the impedance that is showing it is in dv we don't want it so right click and convert it into linear okay so this is what it is shown in the ohms now so you can see here if i just click here and get the cursor the impedance that it is showing is uh, at low frequency it is showing is 285 kilo ohm so this is really a very high impedance okay so by using the operating point analysis you can find out the id and using the um, lambda you can find out the ro and you will see that this impedance is much much higher than the ro of this uh, transistor so this is how we find out the impedance output impedance of a circuit network and the conclusion is that the common source amplifier with source degeneration has a very high output impedance. So I will share all the LT Spice files in the website whose link is given in the description below. Uh, please try to change the parameter and see yourself so that your understanding of the circuit becomes uh, much clearer. In the next lecture, we will see how the 
gain of the amplifier varies by changing the load basically we will replace the resistive rd load with active device means with the transistor and we will see how does the gain varies with that so let's meet again in the next lecture thank you